Society can and does execute its own mandates, and if it issues wrong mandates instead of right, or any mandates at all in things with which it ought not to meddle, it practices a social tyranny more formidable than many kinds of political oppression. Whenever law ends, tyranny begins. The disease which inflicts bureaucracy and what they usually die from is routine. A party of order or stability and a party of progress or reform are both necessary elements of a healthy state of political life. The struggle between liberty and authority is the most conspicuous feature in the portions of history. Men might as well be imprisoned as excluded from the means of earning their bread. The love of power and the love of liberty are in eternal antagonism. The only freedom which deserves the name is that of pursuing our own good in our own way, so long as we do not attempt to deprive others of theirs or impede their efforts to obtain it. War is an ugly thing, but not the ugliest of things. The decayed and degraded state of moral and patriotic feeling, which thinks that nothing is worth war, is much worse. Men do not desire merely to be rich, but to be richer than other men. It is not because men's desires are strong that they act ill, it is because their consciences are weak. Human nature is not a machine to be built after a model, and said to do exactly the work prescribed for it. The danger which threatens human nature is not the excess, but the deficiency of personal impulses and preferences. Yet, desires and, and impulses are as much a part of a perfect human being as beliefs and restraints. A person whose desires and impulses are his own are the expression of his own nature, as it has been developed and modified by his own culture, is said to have character. In the long run, the best proof of a good character is good actions. Ask yourself whether you are happy and you cease to be so. I have learned to seek my happiness by limiting my desires rather than in attempting to satisfy them. Pleasure and freedom from pain are the only things desirable as ends. Each is a proper guardian of his own health, whether bodily or mental or spiritual. No one can be a great thinker who does not recognize that as a thinker, it is his first duty to follow his intellect to whatever conclusions it may lead. The object of universities is not to make skillful lawyers, physicians, or engineers. It is to make capable and cultivated human beings. In this age, the man who dares to think for himself and to act independently does a service to his race. A state which dwarfs its men to make them, docile instruments in its hands, will find that with small men, no great thing can be accomplished. Persons also require different conditions for their spiritual development, and can no more exist healthily in the same moral than all plants can in the same physical atmosphere. The spirit of improvement is not always a spirit of liberty, for it may aim at forcing improvements on an unwilling people. Over himself, over his own body and mind, the individual is sovereign. Whatever crushes individuality is despotism. First, the individual is not accountable to society. As long as his actions concern the interests of no person but himself. Secondly, that for such actions as injure others, the individual is accountable. I am not aware that any community has a right to force another to be civilized. The only purpose for which power can be rightfully exercised over any member of a civilized community against his will is to prevent harm to others. The only check on the power of the community over the individual is to make sure that the individual is not harmed by the action of the community.